Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Mason African Motives, still working on industrial electronics and two. Uh, this platform, we shall be working from the question paper, which was written in uh, April 2020, that is on AC theory. So we have the first question, that is uh, question number three, that we are going to focus on. Uh, 3.1, we are given three electrical circuits with AC source of variance, Variable frequency are shown below initially. The current flowing in the circuit is the same. So given that the current uh, that is flowing initially is the same. Uh, on 3.11, we are now given how will current flow in each circuit be affected if frequency of the applied AC source is increased. So like if we increase frequency here, if we increase frequency, if we increase frequency, what is going to happen with the current. So this is a resistive circuit, the first circuit, which is our A here, that's a resistive circuit. So on a resistive circuit, actually there's no effect in terms of uh, uh, in terms of the increase or a decrease in frequency. This one, uh, there is no effect. So this one, we're just going to remain as it is, there's no effect. Uh, on the inductor, since we know that uh, actually the frequency, the moment that you increase the frequency, your XL is going to increase. Also, since we know that XL is equivalent to 2 pi F uh, L. So the moment you increase the frequency, it, is, it means that your reactance is going to increase. So if the reactance is going to increase, the current is going to reduce. Since we know current is equivalent to voltage over the reactance, so the bigger the reactance that we have here, the lesser the current. So in this case, uh, current is going to decrease. There's going to be a decrease in current um, for the inductive circuit, all right? We move on to the capacitive circuit. We know that in a capacitive circuit, Xc is equivalent to one over two pi Fc. So the moment we increase the frequency here, our Xc is going to be smaller, like the smaller, the smaller value. So the smaller the Xc, that means the bigger the current. So in this case, our current is going to increase. So there's going to be an increase in, uh, in current. All right, 3.12, what is the relationship between voltage and current in each uh, of, in each circuit? Okay, in each circuit like this part here, what do we have uh, in the resistive circuit in terms of voltage and uh, current? Because we know that voltage and current here, they are actually in phase, they are in, in phase, all right? We move on to the inductive circuit. For the inductive circuit, it is best for you guys to use this concept of the CIVO uh, part here. We know from our CIVO, okay, let me explain this, we have got up. Here we are working with an inductor. So on the inductive circuit, this is an inductive circuit here. You can see that voltage leads current. So voltage is going to lead current by 90 degrees. So voltage leads uh, current by 90 degrees here. Okay, on the capacitive circuit, we have our capacitive circuit here. Uh, capacitance, that's this part here of capacitance. So current leads voltage meaning to say voltage legs current. As you can see, voltage is below current. So in terms of voltage, we are going to write, we are going to say voltage legs current by 90 degrees. In terms of current, you can write that current leads voltage, current leads uh, voltage by 90 degrees. But here it's best for you to write in terms of Voltage, that is uh, the best way that you can have these answers. Uh, so that's what we had actually on 3.11 and 3.12. Let's uh, quickly rush to question 3.2, where we are given an RLC circuit, uh, given resistance, reactance for the inductor and also the reactance for the capacitor, the voltage for the resistor, the voltage for the, cap uh, for the inductor, and also the voltage uh, for the capacitor. So we have this. So the first question is for us to calculate the supply voltage. Uh, so as we know that once we are given this type of a uh, consideration, what is important is for you to have the phasor sum. Always the supply voltage is the phasor sum. All right, so this is 3.21A. 
So the phase are sum, that means we are going to have uh, VR squared. We have to compare in this case between VL and VC. We can uh, see that VL is greater than VC. VL is greater than VC. So our formula is going to be VL minus VC. VL minus VC squared. So that is the phase sum for the given voltages. So V is going to be the square root of, we can substitute VR, which is 150 squared, 150 squared plus VL minus VC, that's 180 minus 90 squared. So that's what you're going to have as the total uh, voltage in the circuit. So let's cross check from our calculator what we have here, We've got the square root of 150 squared plus 180 minus 90. So this is 180 minus 90, 180 minus 90 degrees. So that's uh, squared here. So now you have 30 square root of four, which is 174,929. So it's going to be 929. Okay, so it's 174,929 volts. If we round off to, to three decimal places, Okay, we have uh, the voltage, then the B part, the impedance. So the impedance actually is going to be taken from the reactance. Since we've got resistance, we've got XL. This is ohms, ohms is measured in ohms. So this is our XL and this is our XC. This is not L, that's XL. This is not C, that's XC. Okay, so we are going to have uh, the impedance from there. That's the B part. Impedance also is the phase of sum. So it is going to be the square root of R squared plus since VL is uh, greater than VC, it simply means also XL is going to be greater than XC. That's an obvious case. We can even compare from what you're given. So it is going to be XL minus XC squared. So that's our Z, which is the total impedance for the circuit. So resistance, that's our R there, which is 10 ohms, uh, 10 squared plus XL minus XC, that's 14 minus eight squared, of which we know that 14 minus eight, eight, that's six. But you can just use your calculator uh, for that one. Just put in uh, your values. That's 10 squared plus 14 minus eight in a bracket, open a bracket, 14 minus eight in a bracket. Then you can square that one. That's uh, 11,6619, which is same as uh, 11,662, if we round off to three decimal places, it's going to be a two. So it's 11,662 ohms. Uh, this is the impedance, which is uh, having the same units, just like uh, the reactants, the resistance, and uh, other units that we had, uh, and the other components that we have, it is going to be in ohms. Okay, well, for the part C, which is the current in the circuit. Uh, so definitely, since we have the total voltage, the total impedance, is going to be easier for us to calculate the total uh, current in the circuit uh, since we know that uh, current is actually equivalent. Uh, that is the voltage over the impedance. So this is part C. So our current, that's voltage over the impedance. So we just have to divide the voltage of 174,929 divide by the, the impedance that's 11,662 that's the impedance of the circuit we can have the total current in the circuit all right so let's see what do we have from our calculator 174,929 uh, divide by the current which is 11.662 uh, that's 14,9999 of which you can round off the nine is going to give us 10 so it's going to be 15 at the end so it's going to be 15,000, which is 15 amps. So that's the total current in the circuit. All right, the value of the capacitor on part D. So part D, we need the value of the capacitor. So if you are to cross-check, uh, we have got the XC here in this case, and we need the value of the capacitor now, which is C. So we want to calculate C, and we also have the frequency here, the frequency of 100 hertz. So that can actually work from our formula for XC. So this is actually part D. I can just write it here so that it can be clear for us. We know that XC is equivalent to one over two pi FC. So if we are to make C to be the subject, C is equivalent to one over two pi FXC. So that's what you're going to have to one over two pi FXC. So that means we just need to simply substitute the values that you're given 
one divided by two pi, you can use the value for pi, you can just use your calculator for pi, times the frequency of 100 hertz, multiply by XC, or XC in this case, that's eight ohms. Okay, uh, normally, if you are dealing with uh, capacitance, your answer should be uh, to microfarads, and I actually referred to this microfarad data. I talked about this. I said this is 10 to the power of minus six. So for you to convert to microfarads, you multiply by the opposite of the power, which is times 10 to the power of six. So whatever answer that you're going to get from the calculator, multiply by 10 to the power of six if you're dealing with capacitance. So this is one over uh, two pi times the frequency of 100 times eight, we are going to obtain a certain decimal that is 1.9, whatever that we have, then times 10 to the power of six. This is now converting to microfarads. So it is going to be 198.9436, which is 198.944. So you're going to have 198, uh, that's 198.944. Now it is in microfarads. So it depends with the units of form measure, but mostly when dealing with capacitance, guys, leave your answer in microfarads. If you are dealing with a inductance, leave your answer in milli Henry's. Just like this question on part E, where we are now calculating the uh, the value of the inductor that is L. So make sure that you leave your answer in milli Henry's. Okay, it is best for you to do that. Okay, so just like what we had from our XC. This time we are going to use XL, okay? So this is part E. From XL, we know that XL is equivalent to two pi FL. So we can divide by two pi F for size to have our L, which is going to be XL over two pi F. So it's just a matter of substituting the values that we are given XL, that is 14 ohms. So we've got 14 ohms. So L is going to be 14 over two pi times the frequency, the frequency does not change. This is 100 hertz here, so you're going to divide by 100. So that's L. So just like I said, your answer in milli Henry's, so we've got 14 over two pi, that's two shift pi here, times 100, which is going to be 0 0.022, whatever that you have. So you can leave your answer like that, um, which is which can be 0 0.022 like that, or to convert to milli Henry's, so we know that milli Henry's uh, from this concept here, milli Henry's, uh, that's actually 10 to the power of minus three. So for you to convert to milli, and you multiply by the opposite, which is 10 to the power of three. So by just multiplying this by 10 to the power of three, I am automatically converting to milli Henry's. That will be two, two, 22,28, two, because this six is going to change this one into two. So it's going to be 22 comma uh, 282. So that is now in a milli Henry's. Take note of the units, guys. Take note of the units uh, that you are having. All right, we move on to the other part, which is the phase angle on part F. I talked about this uh, issue of phase angle that whenever you are dealing with the phase angle, it is best for you to use the resistance and the impedance. It is best for you to use that formula we say that it's at cos R over Z. Because you have the resistance, you have the, the days, you do not have any other extra calculations that you need to make. You just have to substitute from your formula. So across checking one our diagram, we have got the resistance. We calculated the impedance here. So it's just an automatic substitution that you are doing here. So theta, uh, which is our phase angle, is equal to arc cos. R, which is the resistance, our resistance that is uh, 10 ohms. Yeah, we've got uh, 10 ohms over the impedance. We're going to divide 10 over the impedance of 11.662. So that can actually give us impedance, uh, the phase angle for the given circuit. So of course, from your calculator, uh, that's of course 10 over. So let's see, let's see here, of course 10 over. Uh, 11.662, what do we have here? We are going to obtain 30.9645, which is something like 30.965, okay? So that's 30.965 degrees. So that's the phase angle uh, that we are going to have. So if you are to use any other way, uh, you have to uh, check 
with the the format and also the values that you are having. So you can also use XL minus XE. Still, it's one and the same thing. Remember, guys, uh, on your formula sheet, there are so many ways that you can actually use. Let me show you one of uh, one or two things that we have here so that uh, it can actually help us. Okay, so uh, actually this question but did not have formula sheet, so it was going to be difficult for us. Okay, anyways, uh, the other part, that was 3.22. We are now given to draw the vector diagram up, uh, of the above circuit. So you're not told in terms of voltage, in terms of what, so you're just going to uh, draw this one in terms of the voltages. So that's the vector diagram, and we've got uh, just two marks for that. So since we comparing this, we can see that uh, our VL is greater than VC and so forth. So we can just have our vector diagram like this. Okay, so this is uh, 3.22. We have got uh, the voltages. This is the normal voltage that we have, which is the voltage from the resistor. And uh, that's the voltage of the inductor, the voltage of the capacitor. And uh, we, we need the equivalent now, that is the sum for the voltages, which is the one that we are going to have this, which is the phasor sum. So this V is the phasor sum on the angle that we are given. We calculated that angle, it was 13.965 degrees uh, that we calculated here. So this is actually VL minus VC. So that's V not X, because we are talking about voltages here. So this is going to be VL minus VC. So you can even uh, substitute the values if you want, uh, or just to indicate like that, you can actually have full marks for, for this. So that is the vector diagram. Uh, you can substitute, we, you know your values, you've got your VL, you calculated, uh, you've got them, VL, VC, VR. So you can just substitute uh, these values on the diagram if you want to do so, but uh, that one, you can even leave it like that. So that's what we had guys from this question. Uh, that is AC theory, 20 marks on AC theory, which is a lot of marks that you can actually have. So it needs, uh, you to understand the concept of the questions that you are given uh, and also how to attempt the questions. But as you can see, these are actually easier questions that you just need to work on uh, to revise on as much as you can. So that's guys from Amazon African Motives working on engineering and for now on industrial electronics and to till we meet again.